Jupe Festival, Westbridge Christmas, episode 13, Goyler af Guds Nåde. I guess something like entertainer chosen by God, something like that. Thoughts. So, um, another episode I love, though I will be criticizing the offensive elements. Spoilers for these first 13 episodes, let's dive right in. So, yeah, um, Danny and Stuart both leave, uh, you know, to, to go make money, leaving Anna to do the, the housework, and let's see, which builds nicely into a, it's not in this episode, but there's a thing coming up that all of this, you know, taking advantage of Anna, you know, builds towards him. You know, he points out, we had an agreement. We we agreed we would help each other with this, you know, housework. <clears throat> and let's see. Yeah, um, real quick, for those who don't know, you know, you might be surprised that Stuart is you know, taken away by the, you know, he's he's arrested at one point in this episode. I, I'm not entirely sure if it's, like, everywhere, but there are definitely, you know, certain places in Copenhagen where are not allowed to perform, you know. And it's not because the song is as messed up as it is. It's the fact that he's performing. And... Yeah, um, the song is just ragingly transphobic. There's also some racism in there. And I, I can imagine that some might say, you know, how transphobic can it be? Over the course of the song, you know, Stuart clearly, you know, he's, he's giving us the account of how he eventually got a taste for having sex with trans men instead of cis women but there's still like there's a lot of the individual terms used there's there's one point where you know he just uses like five different offensive terms for it within a few seconds uh, you know the fact that he ends up being in favor of it does not change the fact that it the way he's discussing it is extremely transphobic and we the audience are encouraged to think that trans people are inherently repulsive and you know basically the the fact that he likes it is something we're supposed to think is wrong rather than yeah you know we should all accept trans people and it's also, like, it's pretty messed up, like, almost every single time that trans people even come up on this show, it's in, in regards to sex work, as if every trans person is in, you know, in sex work. Now, let's see, yeah, and the, yeah, so, so, uh, Randy and Gata are both... You know, they, they show up at the, and, you know, yeah, looking for the 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 two men and that that live there. And, you know, Anna says, you know, I've, I have tea. And they're like, oh, you know what, I've, I gotta, I should be going anyway. And, you know, but we'll be back. And then he's like, the tea will be, the you know, the tea will still be hot. And they're like, don't threaten me yeah we'll be back despite that you know just yeah that's pretty funny and I, I appreciate the you know it's the 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 man who stands in for honest Madison whenever like every single time that you have to have two of the characters that Anna's Madison plays, which is most of them, you know, pretty much, if, if they're not, like, 
one of the one of the children who who show up, it's almost definitely going to be Honest Madison. Every single time that the the you know when the camera isn't on that particular person, the there's a stand-in, and his name is Suna Svenikia, and he mostly does not get to show his face on you know he he didn't expect to be on camera at first he was he joined as a runner you know he was just supposed to but you know someone noted i mean you look a lot like honest madison you know not not quite enough that you the only times they show his face is like from the side you know, maybe with some, if, if Stewart is from the side and you see some sideburn, you know, you can just barely cheat it, but you can't show his face directly, so a lot of the time you can't tell that that's him if you don't know. But here, in this episode, he plays two roles, and, you know, you could say, I mean, they look almost exactly like that's true, you know, you can, you can tell that it's Honest Madison as all the other roles as well. So, you know, this is just, that's something I, I hadn't really thought about until... You know, a couple of months ago, it, it hit me. In Danish television and movies, we kind of have a uh, there's a there's a, um, a sort of there's there's just this agreement that yeah, the same actor can appear in multiple roles, especially if it's like a series of films, like the Olsen gang films, Olsen Benton for the Danes. For my fellow Danes, yeah, there's a there's a bunch of actors who appear in several of those, and they're clearly not playing the same role. Like st straight up, sometimes that character will die in one movie, and the actor will be playing a different role in a later one. So it's like, okay, there's no way that it's supposed to be the same person, and they don't like cover them with makeup or anything. It's just kind of yeah, you know, and and really. I don't. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but it is something that I'm not sure. Like, I don't think very many Americans would. You know, it's it's. So so yeah. Anyway, but yeah, Sun Svenikia. You know, he plays like an office worker, and he plays the the cop. You know, the, the yeah, the office worker that Danny tries to hustle and does a stunningly bad job at. And the cop who arrests Honest Madison. And it's, you know, like, you could maybe have gotten away with it for the office worker, but the cop, there's just, there's no way to, to fake that. It, it would have to, it, it really had to be a, a different actor than Honest Madison. And he does a really great job. Like, we see him twice within a, as soon as Vanekia, within a short space of time. It's completely different, like, temperament for these characters. And... Yeah, um, Igor, you know, kicks down the door and gets in, and, you know, yeah, it's kind of misogynist, this thing of, you know, even this, you know, Russian, like, maybe ex-KGB, certainly, you know, like, black market smuggler guy, you know, even he is not as, you know, as, as, Intense as a, a woman who's who's on her period, and right. Um, so, as far as I know, the thing Danny is trying to do and failing spectacularly at, I believe it's called three card monte. And the thing is, like in real life, yeah, there's there's some people who are really good at that. But Danny moves his hands way too slowly. Like, of course the office worker can can keep his eyes on the card. He's, he's like, doing, like, this. You know, you're supposed to do, like, this, like, really, really quickly. You know, I'm not saying I could do it. I can, I can mine it like I just did, but I wouldn't be able to do it in real life. But if you can't do it in real life, maybe don't try to do it. Like, find something else, you know. And, yeah. Honest Madison even plays himself briefly, and the only thing he says is the word no, which, like, feels a little weird because that's not something that you connect with him, but I guess it's a reference to the the father of Tackle from Tackle Kniebe, Turkle in Trouble, who is, like, always saying the word no, which is, of course, a, a joke about how 
you know, when you're like 12 years old, the only word your father is able to say is no. You know, like even stuff that, that it doesn't, like at one point Tackle comes home and he's like, hi dad, and the answer is no. Then he's like, um, is mom home? And the answer is no. And and then right after, like, his mom, you know, calls out from the kitchen. You know, it's just, it makes no sense. But, yeah. Um, and and at one point, Danny says, Vesnagarum, which I don't, I forget if I've mentioned that in one of these videos, but, you know, translate to, translates to what are you talking about? And yeah, you did a radio show that, yeah, I think I did mention that earlier. Anyway, but yeah, um, that's what that is. And yeah, the episode ends with Danny trying to trick Stuart out of, you know, most of the money. And yeah, um, the, the, <coughs> Um, yeah, you know, the, the speaker catches and he's like, is there cash bail in Denmark? You know, and, and, ah, yeah, come, come back. And then the speaker's like, would you stop that? I mean, you really opened the door on that one, buddy. Like, I don't know what to tell you. If, if you didn't think that Stuart was going to, you know, interrupt you after, after that, but yeah, and that, and it is true. Um, no cash bail here it's i guess free I, I i've never been in in prison so i don't know but yeah you know and and it does like you know I, I forget exactly who said it but someone pointed out you know the fact that bail costs money is really just a way to punish poor people you know rich people have the money to pay for bail just one of many, many ways in which laws are set up to screw over poor people.